Shalom and welcome to Shikul Da'at. I'm Rabbi Josh Rose. Every person at some point wonders whether their life will make a difference. Some are haunted by the question, and for others it's just a mere curiosity, but no one can pass through these divine estates and avoid the question entirely. The answer offered by the Jewish tradition is that your life matters very little, and at the same time it matters more than anything. It matters supremely. And we have to keep both of these things in mind. The paradox is difficult to understand, but essential. It is suggested by the Torah portion and in its interpretation, as I'll discuss in a moment. The question of the worth of our individual lives and where we fit in is urgent. Shavuot begins on Saturday night. We stand once again at Mount Sinai and receive, if we are willing, the Torah and all that is in it. It demands that we be actively involved in revelation in our own lives, and yet we are aware that its demands, at once ancient and brand new, are so enormous and far-reaching that in the face of its radiant light, our own lives don't seem to cast even a small shadow. And the question is urgent in another way. We live in dangerous times in which crassness, selfishness, and craven dishonesty seem to have temporarily the upper hand in our national life and in the culture more broadly. Cynicism calls out seductively, inviting us to accept an embrace that seems to assure that there's nothing we can do anyway and no sense in fighting against the inevitable. So, how do we measure our lives? This week, we open the fourth book of the Torah, Bamidbar, known in English as Numbers. It begins with the census. Vayedaber Hashem el Moshe b'midbar sina b'ol moed b'chad l'chodesh asheni b'shana ashenit l'tzetam eretz Mitzrayim lemor. Hashem spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting on the first day of the second month, in the second year following the exodus from the land of Egypt. The first verse sets the stage. It continues. Suhat rosh kol adat b'nei Yisrael l'mish b'chotam l'vet avatam b'mispar shemot kol zachar l'gugulatam. Take a census of the whole Israelite community by the clans of its ancestral houses, listing their names, every male head by head. You and Aaron shall record them by their groups from the age of 20 years up, all those in Israel who were able to bear arms. Associated with you shall be a man from each tribe, each one the head of his ancestral house. So the census is for a very particular reason, to ascertain the number of individuals in each tribe who are fit for military service. Now, you may have heard that it is a violation of Jewish law to count people. The Talmud takes up this question in a beautiful passage that I want to share with you. It's a little complex, so we'll sort of pause along the way to reflect. Rav Elazar said, Whoever counts Israel transgresses a biblical prohibition, as it is said, and then he quotes the prophet Hosea, The number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured. Rav Nachman ben Isaac said, That person would transgress two prohibitions, for the whole verse says, which cannot be measured and cannot be counted. Okay, so this is the first part of the Talmudic discussion. The prophet Hosea has said that that the people Israel will be beyond measure. Rabbi Elazar deduces from this that we are prohibited from attempting to measure Israel, which would seem to refer to counting or taking a census. So that already raises a question about our Torah portion. How is it that God can demand a census of the Israelites if if God's own prophet forbids that? Note the little addition of Nachman ben Yitzchak. It's easy to miss that, what he's adding, so to speak. He says that someone who counts Israel violates not only the commandment against measuring, but also an apparent commandment against counting, because the verse also mentions that. So we're left wondering, what is the difference between measuring and counting? No answer is provided here, but the question itself illuminates. Perhaps he's suggesting that it is one thing to count the numbers, to number that which is finite, the limits of our lives. It is another to measure the ultimate value of a thing. And this will continue to be a theme throughout the Talmudic teaching that I'll continue with now and our own reflections. The passage goes on. Rab Samuel ben Nachmani said, Rab Yonatan raised an ejection. It, excuse me, raised an objection. It is written, The number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. 
and it is also written, which cannot be numbered. And the implication is that there's a contradiction here. So here's a different puzzle. If the Israelites are like the sand of the sea, then they are not really beyond measure. Sure, the number would be very, 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 very large, but at least theoretically, it could be counted. There is, after all, a finite number of grains of sand. So, how can the prophet then say, it cannot be numbered? The passage continues, There is no contradiction. Here it speaks of the time when Israel fulfills the will of Hashem, and there of the time when they do not fulfill God's will. Rabbi, on behalf of Abba Yose, son of Dostai, said, There is no contradiction. Here it speaks of counting done by human beings, and there of counting by heaven. Okay, so here we have two separate answers to the problem in this verse that seems to suggest that Israel is both finite and beyond counting, a paradox that we uh, that, that the Talmud suggests is in the verse. The first answer is that Israel is finite when they do not fulfill God's will and beyond number when they do. The second answer is that Israel is finite when counted by human beings, but beyond number when measured by God. A beautiful and deep teaching, complex to be sure. But the essential concern of the Talmud here is in some way kind of simple. Are we prohibited from counting people? The Talmud gives different answers that each suggests that in viewing people as faces in a crowd, their true worth is diminished and their ultimate purpose concealed. Rabbi, which is shorthand for Yehud HaNasi, is the last voice in the teaching. He was the one who said that Israel is finite when counted by people, but infinite in God's eyes. When we are counted as part of a group, we are no more than a number. But, Rabbi says, in God's eyes, Israel is immeasurable. Each person, therefore, is of infinite value. The danger of being seen as nothing more than a name on a list is captured in the Hebrew idiom for taking a census. It is su'ut et rosh, literally lift up the head. The phrase can mean to count, or, as Nachmanides tells us, to prepare someone for execution. To be counted is to stare at the edge of the sword. Each of us knows what it is like to be just another number. Few experiences are as painful as that of being seen as an object or a tool in someone else's plan. Each of us has been used in this way, and surely we fall into the temptation to treat others so. The anguish of that experience is that we are not being seen for who we truly are. And who are we? On the one hand, I'm just another one of the billions of people born in the 20th century and destined to die in the 21st. Or just another of the four million Oregonians. Another of the tens of thousands of Jews who live in Portland. But you and I are, of course, more than that. This is what the Talmud is teaching. The numbers do not explain who I truly am. The Kedushad Levi says of verse 19 in our parsha that, quote, God gave the Torah to Israel, and the soul of Israel is the body of the Torah. Israel are the 600,000 letters of the Torah, and every individual within Israel is a letter of the Torah. When Moses numbered them, he studied the Torah. And this, what is, this is what is alluded to in the verse in our parasha that says, when God commanded Moses, that is, when God commanded him to take a census, it indicates the commanding of the Torah that God commanded Moses himself when he counted Israel. In this reading, the counting, fraught with the danger of diminishing people as objects, becomes just the opposite. God directs Moses to see the people as Torah, Quote, every individual within Israel is a letter of the Torah. When Moses numbered them, he studied the Torah, says the Kedushat Levi. Moses overcomes the ordinary human challenge of numbering others. He's able to see each person as an utterance of God, a letter to be understood, because he or she emerged ultimately from the divine mind. The Torah precedes us all and will be a source of life long after we are gone. And it cannot be reduced to any single meaning. It is an utterance of the infinite. 
The Torah helps shape the world with a message about how we are to act and what we are to make with our lives. And Levi Yitzchak is inviting us to think about our lives as an expression of that same Torah. Our actions, our thoughts, everything we do here is like a verse written on parchment, recorded and left there to be seen and understood by those who come after. And it's important to know that this is not just for the famous or for historical figures alone, not at all. Everything we do changes the world in some way and so echoes through eternity. A Torah that is missing a single letter is not kosher. The Torah is not complete without you. I don't know the measure of any deed, you don't know the reckoning of any decision. If we peer too far out on the horizon, time fades away. But that's only because of our limited vision. You have a part to play in the greatest story ever told. You are needed. You are a letter of the Torah. And don't you forget it. Sinai awaits. Have a good Shabbos. Hope to see you Saturday night here for our Shavuot program with Congregation Panay Or. Thank you so much for listening.